episode. Sorry about episode. that. We figured it out. Yeah. Press, press up on the control stick on for the those right, wondering. Or on the, on the left control stick yeah. specifically. We're, we're, way, we're way past this. Maybe. But if you just sat back and let them kill the kid, you could have saved us some trouble. His tone was light, but it confirmed my fears. I may have escaped the schemes of the Ronin, but I was ensnared by something much darker. Perhaps. That decision is not ours to make. Huh? Then who was in charge of these two? Their conversation led me to believe they were part of an organization. As I thought about it, I recalled hearing about men with blue coats. Uh! My thoughts were interrupted by a dark shape sliding into view. Slide. Oh. I swallowed hard. The moonlight shone off his smooth, dark hair. For reasons I couldn't fathom, in that moment the light on his hair made me think of the wistfulness of flower petals. The wistfulness of flower petals. Well, so someone fell in love with him fast. It was, it's those purple eyes and flowing black hair that did it for her. It was almost as if the cherry trees were blooming out of season. Luck is not your friend tonight. His voice was cold and quiet, like a blade of ice. Blue-white moonlight lit his slender face and shone from the blade pointed at my chest. But it wasn't the sword making my breath catch. It was his <clears throat> eyes. They were fierce and hard. And purple. But somewhere behind... <laughs> <laughs> fierce and hard and purple. <laughs> yes, this is Hijikata. But somewhere behind them, I could catch a glimpse of something else. There could be no doubt that he was prepared to kill me, and yet he looked troubled. Not kindness, but perhaps mercy? Run, and I will kill you. Do you understand? I nodded. There was no doubt he meant every word he said. He stared at me for a moment, then grimaced. But his... So he, and put his sword away, sighing. Sink. Oh, it did it for me. <sighs> what? I was too surprised to stop myself from speaking, and it quickly became apparent that I wasn't the only one. What? Wait. Hijikata, are you sure about this? This kid saw... everything. That can't be good. As he spoke to the man he called Hijikata, his eyes narrowed. The man called Hijikata frowned back at him. Shut up. If you keep that up, you know what we're going to have to do. It was clear enough that what I'd seen was something they wanted to keep hidden. The more they said, the more I got it, and it was clear none of us wanted such a thing. I really think it's going to come back to bite us in the ass if we let this kid go. The way he looked at me made me feel as if he'd read my mind. So we should just... So we should just kill people now? No. I'll see what to do with this kid when we get back. I agree with the commander. If we remain here, we are likely to be seen. Again. Then he looked down at the creature he'd killed, and though he'd forgotten, as, as though he'd forgotten the whole ordeal. Oh yeah, I forgot I killed you. If they have this sort of reaction to blood, then they don't seem like they'll be very practical. Damn. He peered down at the corpse, his face an emotionless mask. When he looked back up at his companions, however, his eyes narrowed. As for you two, drop the Hijikata and Commander Act. Keep a low profile. What do you want me to call you then, dude? Shh! What? Come on, you can't be serious. Aren't our blues a bit of a giveaway? 
He was right. Even I had heard stories about a gang of cruel men in blue coats who cut people down in the streets, but I didn't know how to confront the dilemma of pretending I didn't see any of these horrors. My mind swirled through a pool of worries and thoughts, almost as if I was being drawn into their world. A world where there is nothing strange in carrying on a normal conversation in the dead of night with corpses for company. What shall we do with the bodies, then? There don't seem to be any physical signs. Hijikata thought for a moment before he spoke. Just take their blues. Yamazaki can deal with the rest. As you wish. <laughs> Another man cut down in the street, huh? Doing a great job, aren't we? He gave a derisive bark of laughter. Oh, right. Whenever, whenever, <laughs> whenever I saw those words, the first thing my brain always did was... Bah, 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 bah. No. What the fuck is a bark of laughter? Ha! <laughs> ha! So long as we keep our mouths shut, I don't think anyone will know we were here. He looked directly at me, and I got the distinct feeling his words weren't for his companions. It was common for people to be murdered in Kyoto. It was a dangerous city, after all. I knew that, of course. But to see it happen? That was something else entirely. Yeah, sorry. If death was such an easy thing in Kyoto, I thought, then the city itself must surely be mad. Ah, uh, yes. We did save you, didn't we? Huh? Kayla, lay down! God, you're driving me nuts. I didn't realize right away he was speaking to me. Hi, Sammy. You okay over there, Izumi? Yeah, I think I'm just getting minor allergies, maybe. <laughs> when I did, my eyes went wide. What do you mean you saved me? Well, he did have a point. Despite their threats, they saved my life. I stood up as steadily as I could manage, brushed some dirt off my clothes, and bowed. Um, thank you very much. I apologize for not thanking you earlier. There was so much going on, I was a little confused. I glanced up at them tentatively. The man called Hajime. Nobody called him that. <laughs> <laughs> the man called Saito also looked confused. His eyes were wide and he had an expression I couldn't place. Hichikata looked as though he'd taken a bite of something sour. I hey, sighed. I like sour things. I sighed deeply before continuing. I, I know it seems weird to say that, but he told me I should say thanks, so I... I looked up. Saito and Hichikata both stared pointedly at anything but me, and the third man was shaking with laughter. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, my apologies. I certainly did tell you to, didn't I? He broke out in laughter again, <laughs> so much so that he was forced to wipe a few tears from his eyes as he straightened up. Are you okay? <sighs> oh, man. Oh, I actually did make myself cry. <laughs> God damn it. Well, you're welcome. I'm Soji Okta. Nice to see a kid who knows how to be polite. Thank you for helping me. Not quite sure what else to do, I bowed again. The one you should be thanking for saving you is Hajime Saito over here. And this bossy guy here is... What the hell do you think you're doing, Okta? Sir, I read your concern. Oh, wait, that's Saito. Sir, I read your concerns, but we must move. Whatever mirth was inspired was gone. The man called Saito. Saito. <laughs> the man called Saito now spoke with quiet urgency. The man named Okta grabbed hold of my wrist, smiled, and led us down the street. His grip was a touch too tight to be friendly, his fingers like iron cables around my arm. There was no question about my situation. 
I quickly picked up on the notion that if I were to run, I would be killed. Instantly. I mean, Hijikata said as much. My life was in the hands of these strange men. I set my jaw and stood up as straight as I could. My eyes crept up from the blood-stained coat and met Saito's gaze. Hi, Sammy. It would- that's not me. It would be best if you prepared for the worst. I doubt this will end well for you. His words were like a dagger in my stomach. What was going to happen to me? Was I- Holy- What the fuck? <laughs> that was half an hour. <laughs> that was the episode timer. I didn't know it was going to make that much noise. Let me see if I can turn that off. That was weird. But it, it, it seems like this scene is going to end soon, so... Yeah. His words were like a dagger in my stomach. What was going to happen to me? Was I... Was I going to die? As we walked through the bleak Kyoto night, I felt horror crawl its way up my spine once again. The cause of my horror wasn't the gruesome end that awaited me, but something else entirely. Sammy! I can't see... I spoke with these men and watched them speak standing next to a warm corpse soaked in blood. That I had done such a thing terrified me in an altogether different way. Perhaps this is what it is like to go mad. And the opening which we've already seen. Well, uh, do you have... Achievement unlocked. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Chapter one. Do you have a pause button? I will in a second. Ow, 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 ow. I'm going with the Sammy. There we go. All right. Well, that's it for this episode. We'll take a short break. And as soon as I get out from under this cat... I think we'll be back with episode one. Well, I thought this was episode one. Chapter one. <laughs> episode two. We'll see you guys in a bit. You guys keep track at home. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, do you like our content? Do you want to support the show? Click the link in the description below to visit our donation page. All proceeds go towards new and better equipment and games you want to see us play. Everyone who donates will get a special shout out at the end of future videos, and we're currently working on setting up some special perks for you. If you don't want to donate, that's okay too. You can support us by subscribing and clicking that bell icon so you get notified whenever we put out a new video. A huge thank you to Kyle Sheridan for donating and helping to keep our show going. Thank you so much for checking out today's episode. If you'd like to find out how I ended up in Kyoto, click the box on the left to check out last episode. Or, if you'd like something a little different, head to that box on the right to check out Saving Throw, where the members of Revolutionary Productions play through ridiculous adventures in the world of Dungeons & Dragons. Seriously, go check it out. That's an order. Hi Hijikata? You can't just order the viewers around. I can if they're all like you.